Alright guys, in this video we're going to be having a discussion about the PlayStation 5 stock issues. There's a new report that claims this is something that could remain a problem all the way into 2024. Obviously not something we want to be hearing, obviously not something Sony wants to be hearing, but I think that this is important to go over because this is going to be a defining aspect, unfortunately, of the PlayStation 5 generation. And considering it may last until 2024, by that point, we are past the halfway point of a traditional console generation. So you have to imagine that Sony is either already in the process or has done something to potentially correct this or at the very least mitigate the potential damage that could be done to the PlayStation brand because of something that's out of their control over the course of this generation. And I have to word it that way because when we look at what Sony chose to do going into the PS5 generation, they chose to stick to the traditional console business model, which I would say is something that all of us wanted Sony to do. They stuck with what worked through the PS1, 2, 3, and 4. Granted, they have become more open to expanding in other areas such as PC, and they're looking into cloud as well, and they're obviously revamping the PlayStation Plus service, but as it stands right now, the console is at the center of what PlayStation does. And I have to emphasize that I think that this is what people want. But it's also a big problem for Sony at this current point in time because of how severe this shortage is. So I want to not only go over this report and what it's saying and where it's coming from, who's saying that the shortage could last until 2024, and what exactly is Sony going to do? I have an older report that I think is extremely relevant and seems to indicate that Sony was prepared for something like this to happen, and 2023 is going to be a big year for the PS5 console. So before we get into it, guys, do me a favor. If you do end up enjoying this video or you do like these discussion-based videos, make sure you hit the like button. It really does help the videos more than you know. And if you are new here to the channel, please hit that subscribe button as well. So I came across an article on pushsquare.com where it says PS5 stock issues could last into 2024 as chip shortages continue. It says here Sony's PS5 production woes look set to continue for quite some time yet, based on what Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger has said about the ongoing chip shortages. Speaking to CNBC, Gelsinger warns that the aforementioned chip shortage could last into 2024, a scenario that would no doubt force companies like Sony and Microsoft to once again rework their plans for the current console generation. We believe the overall semiconductor shortages will now drift into 2024 from our earlier estimates in 2023 just because the shortages have now hit equipment and some of those factory ramps will be more challenged, says Gelsinger. Basically, the chip shortage is starting to have an impact on the production line itself, not just the products, which is very, very bad. And it gets you to a point where you begin to wonder, is there anything at all that Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo could do about this? Well, it's hard to say, but I want to now shift to a older report that came out last year. This actually came out just a few months after the PS5 launched. Um, it came out in early March, and it was a rumor that came from Red Gaming Tech where he talked about Sony booking time with TSMC for a 5 nanometer node uh, for a PS5 Slim and potentially a PS5 Pro that is slated to go in production for 2023. Now, why is this relevant and why does this matter when it comes to the shortage? Well, because Sony switching to a 5 nanometer node could potentially help boost the production of the PS5 pretty significantly. Now, it's hard to say if by the time Sony does this, if this is even true, if it's going to make as big of a difference as maybe Sony is hoping, but it seems promising. And honestly, it seems at this moment in time, like the only thing, realistically speaking, that Sony could do to potentially mitigate, again, the damage that could be done this generation because of something that's out of their hands. So this is an article from Notebook Check. Sony's latest console, the PS5, runs on seven nanometer chipsets but Red Gaming Tech claims that the company has, quote, booked 
time, end quote, with TSMC in 2023 for its 5 nanometer node. Typically, a node switch implies that a new console is in development, like with the move from 28 nanometer in the original PS4 to 16 nanometer with the PS4 Slim and PS4 Pro. Red Gaming Tech asserts that Sony has assigned TSMC's 5 nanometer node for a PS5 Slim. Although he stresses that this is more of a theory than a leak, the company may be planning to release a PS5 Pro using a 5 nanometer node, but Red Gaming Tech believes that Sony would need to increase the console's GPU die size if it were to do so. So this is really important because since the time this article was written up covering what Red Gaming Tech said, we've actually heard from other individuals uh, across the industry that they heard from their sources that this is what Sony is planning, that they are planning what seems to be both a PS4, PS5 Pro, excuse me, and a PS5 Slim. The only problem is if Sony does pursue a PS5 Pro, it could still be just as hard to find as the regular PS5 that's out right now due to the increase in the GPU die size if that's something they have to do. But what we really want to focus on here is the PS5 Slim and the fact that Sony doing this in 2023 actually lines up perfectly with what they did with the PS4. I know a lot of people are like, well, how is Sony focusing on a PS5 Pro? How is that going to help it help mitigate the you know shortage problem they're having? Well, the Pro itself wouldn't necessarily do it, although switching to the five nanometer node is what would do it. The fact that Sony could come out and say, we have a PS5 Slim that has been switched to a five nanometer node, this could make all the difference in the world for Sony. And it makes sense that this is what they're going to want to do because at this point, it seems like it's, again, the only thing they can do to try to stop this from becoming as big of a problem as it's seemingly going to be. I was very excited at the launch of the PS5 and a few months after because it seemed like the demand for it was just higher than it's ever been for any console in history. It really seemed like it was on track to break many records, but it hit a brick wall and it's not the PS5's fault. It's not the consumer's fault. It's not Sony's fault. It's just things that are going on in the world that are outside of anybody's control, realistically speaking. So at this point in time, I have to look back at this information and I'm wondering if we're going to hear anything more in the coming months. I'm looking at this information. I'm like, you know, this actually makes sense. At the time, people were kind of laughing at this because they're like, why is this guy Red Gaming Tech coming out here and saying that he's heard Sony has booked time with TSMC for a five nanometer node for a PS5 Slim and a Pro? Like, why are we talking about a PS5 Slim and a Pro model literally just months after the PS5 just launched? This is why, because this is how far in advance a company like Sony and all these other companies, this is how far in advance they have to think about this stuff. They have to prepare for worst case scenarios. And it seems like Sony, I don't know if they necessarily anticipated that the shortage would be this severe. I mean, maybe that is a scenario, a you know, kind of worst case scenario that they ran, but nonetheless, it seemed like they were maybe always planning to kind of follow the same trajectory that they did with the PS4, where it's like, okay, we're just going to release the base model console, that being the PS5. And about three years later, we're going to announce the PS5 Slim and the PS5 Pro, and we're going to phase out the base model PS5. Uh, we could also potentially even see a price decrease depending on what Sony wants to do. Although I would argue that there's really no need for Sony to you know, decrease the price of the PS5 anytime soon. It would be great if they did, but there's no need for them to do that right now. Again, the demand is still extremely high. So I think what we could see potentially, not just for the sake of seeing it, but uh, you know, again, keeping in mind that this would help Sony by switching to a five nanometer node, we could see them announce a PS5 Slim, which will be $500 in 2023 and maybe launch in 2023. And then maybe a PS5 Pro that could potentially be $600 uh, that will, you know, likely be more scarce than the Slim for sure. And that could also launch at the end of 2023, or maybe these consoles could launch in 2024. None of this is confirmed, but at this point in time, I am very, very likely to believe that this is what Sony is doing. Because to think that they're just kind of sitting back, reading reports that the shortage could last until 2024, and just saying, oh, well, you know, we'll just ride it out and 
when the shortage is over, it'll be over and we'll just kind of continue to do what we do. That's not the case. Sony is likely sitting on many PS5 games that are currently in development. And by PS5 games, I mean exclusives. I mean games that probably aren't being released on PC. Sony is absolutely going to do anything they can do at this point in time within their means and without completely messing up the development pipeline of the PS5 to produce more units. And this seems to be the most rational and tangible thing that Sony can do. And at this point in time, we're just going to have to kind of sit back and be patient and wait to hear if we get any more reports on this or if we hear anything official from Sony. One thing I will say is Sony's going to be doing their earnings report soon and they're going to have to acknowledge the severe shortage and they're going to have to kind of let their investors know what it is that they plan to do. So we may be getting more insight into this sooner rather than later, and I will be sure to keep you guys updated. But that's going to do it for this discussion video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. If, again, if you did, leave it a like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell notification icon, and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.